I'm the Hornet King, and I removed some incredible and insane wasp nests. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel. This is the removal of a yellow jacket ground species known as Vespula alicensis, and it is one of the more common yellow jacket ground species that I deal with here in PA. Uh, it's not one that I've covered very often because there's a differentiation between Vulgaris and alicensis, and oftentimes the ones I remove are Vulgaris. This one in particular happened to be the Vespula alicensis. So this particular removal, this customer had a garden out front that had like one of those fabric covers over it, and these guys ended up making their way in behind that and underneath of it and making a tunnel down to a decent sized nest underneath the ground. Uh, this was a little bit later in the season, so when you start to see that I remove it out, um, it had a lot of envelope caked inside of that cavity space down below. So just pounding on the ground, trying to get something to come out, but they were so deep down in there that the vibration wasn't setting them off. And since it being later in the season, a lot of the adults were down at the very bottom of the comb, so they wouldn't have noticed that, that thumping that I made. But you can see the ones that are foraging coming back and flying around me and trying to attack me and things. Uh, this customer had actually been stung a couple times from this particular colony. Um, people often ask how people don't notice that these yellow jackets are making a nest at their house because they could be seeing the activity. Well, around in this garden, it hadn't been maintained throughout the spring and summertime, so it had grown up pretty heavy around there. There was a pretty big briar bush that was right over top of this area that I had uh, chopped down before getting um, set up for this removal. So it was pretty easy to uh, not notice this activity going in and out of the garden, other than just seeing the yellow jackets flying around the area and not being able to identify. And most of my customers, they aren't, they aren't investigating. Once they get stung, they stay away from those areas, so they have no idea where the nests are. Um, so when I got there, I could tell where the activity was flying down inside of this big, unkept area of the garden and located the nest pretty quickly. Now, there was a thick amount of envelope at the very top of this nest. Again, that's why the yellow jackets didn't notice me thumping on the surface and pouring out of there to attack me. Sometimes if they are deep enough and there's enough uh, cushion of the envelope, they don't freak out as much when there's activity above ground. And that was the case here. But I was still surprised that a lot of them weren't coming out even when I was dealing with the top of the nest and touching around and pulling up the, uh, the soil and things. Typically ground species, they really react quickly to any kind of activity like that. So just usually what I do is when I remove a yellow jacket nest out of the ground is I try to excavate pretty pretty cleanly. I don't like to dig with a shovel and, and like spike it into the ground and have it tear the nest and everything. I like to just kind of take my time and vacuum up a lot of the soil off the top of the nest with the nozzle and avoid stabbing into the nest or creating any kind of tear in the structure. I like to try to pull them out all in one piece in other words. And again, it's not very common to see this much envelope, like layers of envelope at the very top of the nest. And it's not as, as common with a lot of the species around here. That's how I knew that it must have been vulgaris. Other, you know, like eastern yellow jackets, they make a very brittle and thin layer of envelope at the very top of the nest. But vulgaris or alicensis, they make some very thick envelopes at the top of the nest. So if you remember my well video, there was a lot of envelope inside of that well. And again, that's how I knew that one was Bulgaris. So 
So now I try to get my hands around the nest. Again, I'm not trying to pull it out. I'm not trying to rip it or break it apart. So I was just trying to get my hand down and snake it down inside the cavity. You cannot see down inside that cavity. And it's really unnerving a lot of times. Even with gloves and a suit on, it's unnerving sticking your hands down in a hole that you cannot see what you're grabbing. Um, that goes for wall cavity removals and also goes for ground nests where I cannot see where, my, where I'm putting my hands. So I was able to get the nest out pretty well in pretty much two pieces. Uh, now the activity starts pouring out. These adults were obviously like, what the heck is going on? All of a sudden the nest is removed from that cavity. So I just kind of set it aside for the time being. So you can see all the swarming that started happening the second I did that. As a lot of adults came flying out of there. Just get some shots inside of the cavity. And you can see all the envelope at the bottom. You can also see there's a lot of males and queens down there. And they are just in a, in a mating frenzy. They're also getting ready to uh, leave the nest for the season. And they'll go and they'll mate and they'll winter over somewhere. And, uh, and then start a colony of their own the following season. So you can see them all down there. I and mean, that is a lot of activity down at the bottom of that pole. And I just take the vacuum and just suck them right up. Again, this type of layering of envelope is not common for a lot of ground nest yellow jackets that we have around here in PA. So it's very common for vulgaris and alicenses to have this, this level of envelope layered together like that. So look at that nest. That is a very, very good sized nest. And uh, a lot of the larvae that were packed inside of that thing. This is a very healthy colony. So get the nest into my bin and seal it up. And then I'll start to uh, vacuum up the rest of the adults that are inside the cavity and then fill in the hole and really pack it in there. So that way any foragers that may come back won't be able to get back into that spot and they will die. And that's how deep it is. I was able to fit my entire forearm down inside of there. So just fill back in the cavity with as much soil as I can and pack it in there. I try not to put anything like biodegradable, like, like mulch or sticks or anything, because that would just make a cavity again over time. So I try to use as much soil as I possibly can um, and any biodegradable material that I do add in there. Um, like you see some of this envelope and stuff. Um, I try to just pack it really, really tight and that way to avoid, again, making for an easy cavity for a founding queen to start a nest. You see oftentimes like people put down this fabric and, and plastic in their gardens and that often makes more of a hassle than, than it's worth because if a yellow jacket can get up underneath of there, they, they will make that a very easy place for them to build a nest. Think about it, it's waterproof, it's water shedding, so they don't have to worry about the nest getting saturated with water if it rains heavy. All right, pack it in real good. And I'm going to step away here, and that way it'll let the wasp settle down a little bit and kind of consolidate to one area. Even though this is cut, it makes it look like I walked out and came right back. Um, but I come right back over here then once it kind of settles down a bit, and then just spray the area with a little bit of black flag and just try to batten down the swarming numbers. It turned out there was actually another nest about two and a half feet away from where this one was that I did not see while I was doing this removal and the, uh, the homeowner had actually contacted me again and said there was another nest there. So I came back and had to, had to remove another one, but it was a lot smaller. So people always ask, 
in my videos anymore about me showing the inside of the vacuum. It is so anticlimactic that I haven't been showing it more recently, but here it is. For all the folks that have not seen some of my 2019 videos, this is the inside of the vacuum. It is literally a pile of sludge. <laughs> so I dump them out and usually I put them on my compost pile, but uh, this one I put it out in the driveway because I wanted to dig through a little bit of it and see if I could find the queen. Um, I was really curious to see what the queen looked like in this colony, but I never found her. So, But this is what it looks like. Big pile of sludge, some mud, and paper envelope mixed in with some adults. Hey, Miss Emily. How you doing, Miss Emily? Hey, little squirrely squirrel. Oh, squirrel, squirrel. Oh, squirrel, squirrel. Hey, Miss Emily. <laughs> oh, you see Humphrey Squirrel? There's Humphrey Squirrel. Hey, don't don't bother my squirrel. It's not very nice. Don't worry about it, Tiggers. Miss Emily still hasn't buried that nut all over there. Oh, Tiggles, your name is Kawaiulu. Come on, Tiggles. Come on, Tiggles. Hey, Tiggles. Oh, Tiggles. Thank you, Tiggles, for being Tiggles. Oh, Tiggles. Name is Kawaiulu. Hey, Daisy. Hey, Daisy. <laughs> Hey turkey! Come on, go! Come on, go! Hey turkey! Come on, go! Come on, go! Pop, 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 pop. Hello, little chickie. Hey giblet. Hey giblet. Don't come inside, Humphrey. Stay outside, Humphrey. <laughs> 